Welcome to Classic Take, Season 2, Episode 15. The topic on the discussion today is it says, Balaz's assault on the Galil and the Golan is it a sign of Mashiach's arrival? Is it attacks? Is Balaz shelling the Galilee, the Golan Heights? Is that, is that a sign of Mashiach's arrival? There is a interesting Mishnah at the end of Tractate Saita. It's also a Gemara in Sanhedrin. That's how the Zion. The Gemara discusses various signs that will be right before Mashiach comes. And I'm going to first read the Mishnah at the end of Tractate Saita. The Mishnah says, Bikvis Mashiach, which means the end right before Mashiach comes, or means the footsteps of Mashiach, when Mashiach's footsteps are being heard, that in other words, Mashiach's arrival is close. Chutzpah Yiskei. Chutzpah, brazenness, will become great. People will be very chutzpahdik. The yoiker yamer, inflation will fly through the roof. Hagefen tite imperia v'hayayin biyoiker. Wine will give its fruit. There'll be plenty of wine. Uh, gra- I'm sorry, grapes, uh, vines will give its fruit. There'll be plenty of wine. But nevertheless, wine will be expensive. Why is that? So there's interesting commentary. There's a Hoin Osher, it's commentary of Hoin Osher, written by the Bimnul Chayriki, the author of Mishnah's Chassidim and other works. He says that before Mashiach comes, people will be in, have there will be a lot of anxiety, there will be a lot of fear. There will be different things happening in the world. People are going to be nervous, they're going to be scared. So they're going to drink wine, they're going to dry, try to drown their fear with alcohol or maybe other sub, uh, substances. So that is why, despite the fact that there'll be a lot of wine, the wine will be expensive because there'll be a big demand for wine. The Mishnah continues, Umalchus leminus. The government will become heretical, which many different interpretations when and what this means um, simply means that they're going to go against Hashem, they, they won't be, believe in God anymore, they'll go, they'll, they'll be having radical ideas. There's no rebuke, nobody will be, feel comfortable rebuking, nobody will be able to rebuke, nobody will accept rebuke. Base of Adil is Nus, the place where people gather together to study Torah, will be turned into houses of Znus, of adultery, immorality. Vahagolul Yachrav, the Golil, the Galilee will be destroyed. Vahagavlon, and as in some versions are Vahagolon, Yashum, Yasham, that the Gavlon or the Golon will become desolate. Vahanshe Hagvul, Yisoyevu Meir Leir, the people that are living on the borders will going, be going around from city to city trying to find refuge. Vlo Yichinono, they will not be. Uh, people won't have mercy on them, people won't care for them, they're just going to be going around trying to find a place to stay because it will be dangerous to be at the borders. from Tisrach, people will despise the wisdom of the scholars. So people will be this people, somebody that's fearful of sin will be considered disgusted in the eyes of people. Truth will be lacking. Children will embarrass the face of elders. Elders will have to stand up from small children. Ben Manavel of a son will disgust, will act disgustingly to his father. Bas Kamabima, daughter will stand up against her mother. Kala Bechamoisa, daughter in law against her mother in law. Oyve Ish Anshi a person's enemies are the people from his own house. Pneha Dor Kipneha Kalav, the face of the generation, the leaders of the generation will be like the face of a dog. Haben enim ispayish me aviv, the son is not a, will not be embarrassed from his father. On whom do we have to rely on? Alavino Shabashimaim, on our Father in heaven. Now, when is that exactly is this Ikwes Mashiach? We're looking here at descriptions that uh, I don't think I need much commentary to uh, show how their application in today's day and age. But when exactly is the missionary referring to when we say Ikves Mashiach, the time of the footsteps of Mashiach, right before Mashiach comes, the end of exile? So there are a number of commentaries that discuss this a little bit. Some commentaries explain that in truth, when we're talking about Ikves Mashiach, this period which we're referring to as the footsteps of Mashiach, the end of exile started a long time ago. Furthermore, to a certain degree, it already started from the destruction of the second temple, the Churban Beis Amikdash, 
already started the this uh, the, we already started to have these signs starting to take shape that already to some degree could be considered the footsteps of Mashiach, the end of exile. We have an interesting commentary written by the Yad Rama, who um, Rab Meir ben Tudis Alevia Bolefi, which lived about 800 years ago, I believe, or a little less. And he uh, dis- discusses this Gemara, parts of this mission are also in the Gemara in Sanhedrin of Tzadik Zion. And he says, I'm just going to say some of his commentary, he says that the generation the, in, in Sanhedrin, in the Gemara, instead of using the term Ikves Meshicha, the footsteps of Meshicha, uses the term Dur Shabin David Baboy, the generation on which the son of David, in other words, Meshicha, will come. He said, Base Vad Yil is Nus, a place where people get together will be immorality. So he says that people will be so open doing an immorality, though they won't be embarrassed to do it, that there will be a uh, open place where people do, a public place where people do immorality. Um, then he says that when the, on the term, on the wording that I read before, says, Vahagolil Yashem, that the, the Galilee will be, the Galilee will become desolate. So he has a different wording, a different reading. He says, that it should say v'hagvil yeyoshim, which means gvil gimel vav yud lamed in Hebrew means scrolls of parchment. It means that scrolls of Torah scrolls will become desolate. It will like shrivel up. It won't be people are not going to learn it. Basically, it's going to become like something that's kept, you know, in the geniza. It's put be put away for, uh, for, for, you know, because due to lack of interest. Then he says, what does it mean that the people of, and again, our reading is, the earlier, the people of the borders of Israel be, go around from city to city. So he, he reads it as the people of the scrolls, which means people that write Torah scrolls and sell them are going to go from city to city to try to sell them, find somebody that's interested in buying these Torah scrolls, but nobody will be interested. They won't be given any attention. And um, discusses, mentions a few more of the of the negative things, and he finishes off. He says, "V'tamani, I wonder." This is written about eight hundred years ago. Lafisi monum halalu. According to these signs, we pneima ein ben David Bobe de Renuza. Why doesn't the son of David? Why doesn't Mashiach come in our generation? Which means already in his generation, people society wasn't. Um, very um, on a very high level and he felt that all these things that the mission is talking about is already being fulfilled in his day and age which was many years ago um the uh, rapper once had a talk the rapper spoke about this the in, in 1978 shabbos kodesh parashas bolok the rapper gave an interesting perspective the rapper says that it's true all the signs that the Gemara, the Gemara, the Mishnah speaks about regarding the end of days, Ikvus of the Mashiach, to a certain extent already started to develop at the beginning of exile, at the end of the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash, and more specifically, you know, uh, some commentaries explain they started developing during a little bit after the Second Temple, during the beginning of the um, during the beginning of the fifth millennium, the, the, the Temple was destroyed in the year three thousand. 828, so technically the next millennium began a little bit more than 100 years later, which that's already called. The Gemara says that that the last, that the, this, the world existence is divided into 6,000 years. The first 2,000 was chaos, there was no Torah. The second 2,000 is Torah. And the last 2,000 is the time when Mashiach would come. The temple was destroyed a little bit more than a hundred years before the beginning of the last two thousand uh, to the, the fifth millennium. So, ready at that time, a little bit after the temple's destruction, you know that's when these signs started being fulfilled, according to some um, according to some commentaries. But either way, getting back to the Rebbe's explanation, the Rebbe says that they started becoming developed and becoming felt already way back a long time ago. But nevertheless, the Rebbe used the term that in those generations it was bedakos the dakos. It was more subtly. It wasn't as, yes, people, you know, the chutzpah 
and lack of respect and the breakdown of morality, the breakdown of the family values, the breakdown of society and ethics and morals and values was something that didn't start yesterday. But nevertheless, as somebody, any, any person that's honestly looking at history will have to admit that the way the brazenness and the complete destruction of morality and ethical values that were considered important and uh, things that even people that weren't necessarily believers, the people that had, had a very high standard to life, but there were still some red lines that people didn't cross. So if you look at today's society, we have to admit that today we've gone beyond imagination of uh, anybody that would have imagined how things could get 100 years ago, would never imagine how bad things are today. So obviously, we, the, this, the, these, the manifestation of these signs is becoming much more expressed in today's day and age, which is why we, uh, we're all the more closer to the Mashiach and why we're expecting Mashiach's arrival imminently. Now, one of the signs that has been under scrutiny and the discussion is, as I mentioned before, the sign about the destruction of the Galilee, the Galil Yechariv, and the Gavlon. The Gavlon, we have commentaries that say we're not, that Rashi just says, at a certain place in the land of Israel. That's uh, that's what Rashi says. I'm, I'm sorry, it doesn't say a place in the land of Israel. It says a certain place that has that name will become desolate. Some commentaries discuss. There's the Marsha, there's the Rabbi Yaakov Emd, and other commentaries they discuss. They bring different verses. The term Gavla is sometimes associated with a certain place in Israel, a certain fertile land that gave a lot of fruits. That will become desolate. The uh, other commentaries mention that the land of Edom, the land of Seir, the nation that's associated with the descendants of Esau, is known as Tura de Gavloi. It's called Gavla. It's in, in Aramaic. It's a, and, that, and that will be destroyed with the coming of Mashiach. Mashiach will destroy that center of animosity towards the Jewish people. There are various uh, discussions of what it means, as we see that some people have a different, slightly different reading. Instead of the Galil or the Gavlon or the Gvul, it's Gvil, which is men of the book. But either way, we do have, there is it, some versions of this teaching do have the words, instead of Gavlon, it's the Goylon, which presumably is the Golan Heights, as we know it today. And uh, the sages are obviously prophetically mentioned that there will be some destruction in the Galilee and in the Golan that will precede the coming of Mashiach. Now, I want to make something very, very clear. We're not, we're not expecting and anticipating the fulfillment of all these signs in the most literal sense of the word in order for Mashiach to come. The Rebbe spoke many times. The Rebbe said that these signs are not good things. And in order, they're meant as signs. They're, 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 they show us where the world is heading to. But we're not to pray or to, or to desire or to be happy about the fulfillment of these signs. The Rebbe said many times, we were, we were already yoitz, already, so to say, fulfilled our obligation. We had enough of uh, the fulfillment of these signs and we don't need things to get any worse in order for Mashiach to come. These signs are merely, they're signs. They're not, they're not, Mashiach's coming is not dependent on these things. We don't need things to, things don't have to get terrible in order for Mashiach to come. These are a sign. It shows us where the world is heading to. That when we see all these negative things happen, we know that Mashiach is about to come. But things don't have to get worse than they are in order for Mashiach to come. Additionally, it's very interesting, that, as I mentioned the previous podcast as well, the Ben Yehoyada, there's a commentary of Rabbi Yosef Chaim, the Ben Yishchai. So he discusses in his commentary to Sanhedrin, he gives a very interesting and novel interpretation how a lot of these negative things could all be interpreted for good. So he says that the Golul being destroyed, he says that Galil is also a term for exile. Galil means that people are being rolled around from place to place. So he says that exile will be destroyed. The concept of exile will be destroyed. The Gavlon, he mentions, refers as mentioned before, to the nation of Seir, the mountain of Asa, which is associated with those forces that oppose the Jewish people, that they will be destroyed when Mashiach comes. As it says, Volum Mishim Ratsi and Lishbet Asar Esav, that saviors will come out up in Mount Seir to judge the mountain of Esau. So it could be these things could refer to very positive things. These things don't have to necessarily mean negative things. There's, it all depends on our actions on, and on our attitude, you know, and if we, if we make good of ourselves and the world around us, the Mashiach's coming will be done in a very good way. 
But either way, I wanted to uh, mention before the commentary of Hoyn Osher. So he actually discusses this Mishnah. And he says like this, he discusses the destruction of the Galilee. So he writes that he went up to Israel and he went up to the city of Tzfas. The city of Tzfas is in the Galilee, in the Galil. So he says, I saw with my own eyes how the place was completely desolate. He came up in the year, this was about 400 years ago. Um, sorry, 300 years ago. He came up to the land of Israel. So he says, but when he was there, he saw how people kept that the, the houses being built. Now, when he first came, the place was, was dist- so a bunch of destruction. And people kept building them up. So he says, I say that this is a good sign. It's a good sign for Mashiach's coming, the fact that the Galilee is being rebuilt. Because if the, if the Galilee will be destroyed, where are all the Jewish people going to go? The Galilee is being rebuilt. It's a sign that, you know, that the land is being rebuilt in this place for the Jewish people to come to. So he was really trying to say, the, the Hoi Nosher was of the opinion that the destruction of the Galilee is not something that has to be that until the last second Mashiach arrives, will be a destruction of the Galilee. But the destruction of the Galil you know, it took place many years ago. When before Mashiach comes, actually, it's a good thing. It's the sign for Mashiach's arrivals when that's being built up. We find actually many sources in the Zohar. The Zohar speaks about the Zohar, or even the, the Gemara speaks about the arrival of Mashiach, that Mashiach will first reveal himself in the Galil. So it's it's actually the Galil is a sign of Mashiach's arrival, of, um, of, of, of a place of good. But either way, when we're looking at what's going on in the world today, so we see, you know, that the Galil and the Galan are being attacked, which they were in the past, but we see that much stronger today. So we're not praying that there should be any further attacks, God forbid, but it's definitely a sign that we're holding closer with the, to the coming of Mashiach. And uh, we hope and pray that we already, whatever already happened, happened, that should be significant enough. We shouldn't have to have things go any worse. On that note, I'd like to finish off, mention an interesting point. The, um, there was a famous tzaddik. His name was uh, Rabbi Chaim Olazer Shapiro, the rabbi of Munkach, the rabbi of Munkach. And he was very fiercely into the coming of Mashiach. And he had a very uh, strong um, feelings and opinions about the coming of Mashiach. And he, he publicly expressed his opinion very strongly when the First World War broke out, him and other righteous people believed that this was the Chavli Mashiach. This was the birth pangs of Mashiach. And he very much wanted that this war should lead to the coming of Mashiach. So he said, we should not pray for the war to end. He was very against, there were people, even righteous Jewish leaders who were praying for the war to end. He said he doesn't want people to pray for the war to end. He says, why should we pray for the war to end? We'll pray for the war to end. And then uh, we'll be stuck in exile. He says that Mashiach's coming, we see in many sources, it comes through war, there's terrible things happening. So he actually said, we should pray for the coming of Mashiach. That's what we should pray for. We shouldn't pray for an end of hostilities because that might be holding back the coming of Mashiach. And he was very into this. this I mean, uh, he extensively explained his approach, which he wrote books to explain his, his position. But he basically said that we're, he believed that we're foretold that the coming of the redemption will happen through a lot of suffering. And therefore, once the suffering already started, we already started the process, let's not pray that it should stop, because then we're just going to have to start all over again. Let's just pray that we should have the coming of Mashiach speedily. Let's do whatever we can that Mashiach should come speedily. And he used to tell his congregation, he used to speak, he used to say, are you all ready to give up your life for the coming of Mashiach? Does he have to have Mesira Snefesh? He used to, was certain sources he would quote, which highlight you have to be ready to give your life literally for the coming of Mashiach. So don't, don't pray for peace and quiet. You should pray for one thing, one thing only for the coming of Mashiach. The Rebbe was very fond of the Munkacher. The Rebbe strongly was followed to a certain extent. He was a staunch follower of some of the ideas of the Munkacher, the Rebbe held of, held of him in very high esteem. When it came to this point, we find an interesting distinction in the Rebbe's talks. On one hand, the Rebbe also reiterated the teaching of the Munkacher, of Tzaddik of Munkach, that one has to have Mesira Snefesh, he has to be ready to have self-sacrifice for Mashiach to come. Although I don't think the Rebbe meant in the literal sense of the word, 
that he should uh, put his life on the line, but it meant that he should be ready to give up everything, all his comforts, everything in order, f- in order for Mashiach to come. But at the same time, the Rebbe felt that our prayers for the coming of Mashiach should not be a conflict for prayers for world peace. The Rebbe says that when we see that there's wars and there's negative things in the world, so we should pray that there should be peace because we see that the negative things in the world are affecting negatively the Jewish people. So the Rebbe said that even though the Munkacher believed that we shouldn't pray for peace, so he says, first of all, we don't know exactly what he said. It could be that one change of one word you know, changes the whole meaning. But he says, even if it's exactly the way he said it, it doesn't mean that for every time, for every time in history, the same thing applies. So from one hand, yes, we do want Mashiach to come. We should be ready to give away everything for Mashiach to come. But the second, on the other hand, we should pray for world peace. We don't pray for war, even though Mashiach's coming, in some sources is associated with war, but we're not praying for that to happen. We pray for peace. We pray for Mashiach to come, as the Rebbe would always speak about Mashiach's coming in a way of mercy. So when we see these signs happening, that's obviously a wake-up call that we should intensify our efforts for the coming of Mashiach. And um, we should do good things to make sure the Mashiach comes in a way of mercy and peace and kindness. It should happen speedily in our days. Amen.